Support for WCBU's On Deck comes from Jaguar Land Rover Peoria on Allen Road, providing personalized service with every certified pre-owned Land Rover. Benefits include a 165-point inspection and a one-year unlimited mile warranty. More at jaguarlandroverpeoria.com. An affiliate of the Prairie Band Potawatomi talks about becoming a federally recognized tribal nation. That's just one of the things you'll want to hear about to start your day for Wednesday, May 22nd. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, the Woodford County Housing Authority is scrapping its preference system for housing choice vouchers. This comes after a settlement with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. WCBU's Tim Shelley reports. People who live or work in Woodford County were given 15 preference points for the in-county wait lists. That was the only consideration for preferred placements in public housing. Thomas Dennis is managing attorney for Prairie State Legal Services in Peoria and Galesburg. He says the policy was disproportionately impacting people of color. African Americans only accounted for, I think it was 5.6% of those in county, whereas um, African Americans accounted for 41.8% of those out of county. In a 2022 letter to HUD, Prairie State Legal Services said they believed the waitlist system was crafted to keep people from Peoria out of Woodford County public housing. Only one out-of-county voucher was offered from 2015 through 2018. The Woodford County Housing Authority doesn't admit any violations of fair housing laws in its settlement with HUD, but the agency is required to make changes. The main things are that the, the residency preferences um, is gone and that they are you know, actively supposed to market. The Woodford County Housing Authority didn't reply to a request for comment. For WCBU, I'm Tim Shelley. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. Illinois lawmakers are trying to change the state's prisoner review board. The measure from Democratic State Representative Kelly Cassidy of Chicago was inspired by the attempted murder of Lataria Smith. Smith was attacked by a man she was seeking an order of protection against after he was released from prison. And the Washington City Council is considering an intergovernmental agreement between the city and Washington Community High School for the Washington Police Department to continue to provide a school resource officer. Plus, Illinoisans could soon be allowed to carry an electronic driver's license or state ID in addition to a physical card. The Illinois House passed a measure allowing the Secretary of State's office to put systems in place to allow that. You can find more of these stories and all the details at WCBU.org. The Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation has become the first federally recognized tribal nation in Illinois after a recent decision from the U.S. Department of the Interior. An Oklahoma artist has strong connections with this nation. Yvonne Booz speaks with her to learn more about the artistic culture and heritage of the tribe. Amber Dubois Shepard is an educator, oil painter, mixed media artist, and digital artist. Dubois Shepard has roots that expand across a few Indian nations, Navajo, Sack and Fox, and the Prairie Band Potawatomi. She is enrolled as a member of the Navajo Nation and affiliated with the other two. There are specific formal and legal requirements to being enrolled as a member, becoming a voting citizen of a tribe, versus affiliation being a looser association based on ancestry. Her mother is Navajo, and the Prairie Band Potawatomi comes from her paternal side. My dad and my year younger brother enrolled in the Prairie Band role. And so they, we would go up there um, to Kansas and attend the powwows. And there's a couple of times we attend a different feast. Dubois Shepard says she's been around artists since she was a child. She learned how to weave and do other artistic things, but she says she didn't become serious about art until high school. She had a teacher who inspired her to delve into her gifts. And he was the first real like mentor of mine that really pushed me to start um, working in art and then of course exploring my native background. So he knew a lot, um, interestingly enough, about native art. She says he also encouraged her to apply for art shows. She won best of show at times and placed second or third at others. 
She says this inspired her to continue to create. Dubois Shepard says she must balance her Native backgrounds when she creates. She points out some of the differences between the art by comparing Native dresses. With the Potawatomi designs, they do a lot of like floral designs and beadwork that are very beautiful and kind of striking in, in the way that those are created. And there's some geometric kind of designs, but they're different from the Navajo textiles that I've seen. The Bois Shepherd says even the man wore floral and bead designs. She says the bandolier bag is an accessory that tribal men wore. Sometimes the bags were given as gifts for those who did things for the tribe. Instead of like a written language, it was like you could see some beadwork or large bandolier bag and go, oh, wow, you see that guy over there? He did this just from, you see that sign? Yeah, yeah, I see that. That's what that means. Potawatomi people are known as the keepers of the fire. Dubois Shepherd says the nation uses fire to communicate with the spirits, give offerings, and they also use it during prayers. Tobacco is another important part of this culture. She says it's considered a sacred plant. Dubois Shepherd uses tribal creation stories and incorporates them into her art. She created a piece for some St. Louis students that incorporates components of the flood story. It's two um, male and female figure. They're sitting on a turtle shell. And then there's an eagle coming out of like a flame as well. And then there's a sun and a moon and things like that. So just kind of representing the balance of the world. The boss shepherd explains that the land referred to is called Turtle Island. Which is what we believe that we're on. And that's what our, our, our land is. We're on the back of a turtle shell. Dubois Shepard says she was excited to hear about the land in Northern Illinois. There's still a part of me that's a little bitter about the fact that we have to buy back what was originally our people's land. She says she hopes this creates a domino effect for other tribes who are looking to gain back land. Dubois Shepard says there is so much to learn about the Prairie Band Potawatomi heritage. She suggests people do more research by going to the tribe's website. I'm Yvonne Bruce. Now, before we let you go, some midweek sports action this evening as the Peoria Chiefs take on the Cedar Rapids Colonels at Dozer Park. It's game two in a six-game long series against the Cedar Rapids team. The game begins at 6.35 p.m. and tickets start at $10. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck podcast on the NPR app, Apple, or Spotify.